I am Chris Jenkins for Charlotte Vibe, and today I have two special guests joining me on, uh, what's the name of the show? I got to look at my notes. The Good, <laughs> the Bad, and the Future of the Carolina Panthers. So I have Ashley Stroline from WBTV. You got it. And Nick Carboni <laughs> from WCNC. Who are patient as I work through some technical difficulties. We know how that goes. And I'm yes, we do. Yeah. I'm going to get together. Yeah, we'll cool you down. We'll cool you down. We'll cool you down with some Panthers talk. Yeah. It's not exactly the most fiery uh, circumstance right now for the team, so you'll get no, cooled down quick. It's not. My earpiece is coming. We're going <laughs> to keep on going. So, format two minutes, questions we're going to go through and have a lot of fun. So, the first one, toss up for you guys. Biggest surprise for this 2018 season with Carolina Panthers. Oh, Stroke well, they had, they had go. so much momentum, you know, from training camp to preseason, and then you go six and two, and then you just kind of fall off and lose seven straight. I mean, the wheels, literally, it's like you just were watching a train wreck, and there was nothing you could do about it. It was just one thing after the other that didn't go right for the team. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it, I mean, that's definitely one of them. I mean, a team bound for the postseason, maybe not a division title, but certainly the playoffs, again, bringing the same group back with – more talent on offense than you had that year before and a better version of Cam Newton, at least through the first eight games, to completely collapse like that, an almost historic collapse if they had finished it with a loss. <laughs> yes. uh, but I'll go even deeper into it and just say the defense. I think for years we've grown accustomed to a top 10 type defense under Ron Rivera and his coordinators who had then gone on to NFL head coaching jobs. And for this defense to kind of just lose its bark and its bite, especially down that stretch, was really kind of shocking to see other teams not be intimidated by this defense, not be rattled by this defense, and quite frankly look really comfortable against this defense was something that we haven't seen with Carolina in a long time. So that was the biggest surprise to me. And I guess if we really look into it deeper, maybe it shouldn't have been. I mean, <laughs> if you want to go back and see what they had constructed before the season, maybe it shouldn't have been a surprise that this defense, which was aging, fell off a bit. Yeah. Now, both of you guys took an interesting twist of kind of like taking a negative to be your biggest surprise. So, well, I mean, what? that's the season. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was a negative season. It was, but I'm going to say my biggest surprise was the play of the receivers, mm -hmm. DJ Moore and, and Curtis Samuels. I, I like that. And mm -hmm. kind of making it balloon, ballooning it a little bit more is saying how excited it was to watch North Turner yeah. coach the offense and go from Mike Shula, which kind of got predictive and mm -hmm. kind of boring. and no, There were no halftime adjustments, but North Turner made it. A really exciting season that kind of fizzled, but I agree with that. He was he was his plays were fun to watch, yeah. and he had to get creative once we found out Cam's injury. I mean, we saw some really neat plays that actually worked too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, biggest disappointment from the season could be player, could be team. I mean, I'll zoom in even further into my <laughs> defense and really bang on the defense. And there's a lot of good guys on that defense that we talk to every day in that locker room. But the defensive mm -hmm. line to me was where it all starts. I mean, it all starts up front. And, you know, to have a guy like um, Mario Addison, Julius Peppers, uh, bringing in Dontari Poe, and, and you really thought this defensive line would set the tone for this entire unit and therefore the entire team. And they just didn't get it done. I think in bits and pieces, in certain moments of the season, each guy had their kind of moment. F.A. Obata against the Bengals came in and was a game wrecker. Uh, Mario Addison still had a pretty good year, but there was, you know, he didn't have his best year, and there was nobody there aside him really kind of, you know, taking that number two role or that, that supporting cast role. And, and putting up big numbers. I mean, it's about production in the NFL, and they just didn't produce. And uh, that was, to me, the biggest disappointment, and I think led to partially the overall disappointment on the defensive side. The offense was obviously Cam's shoulder. Yeah. And, and you know whose name you didn't mention? Ooh. KK Short. Yeah. And just to not yeah. even say yeah, his name. Because is, we love is, him yeah. so much. But yeah, he yeah. did not have the best year. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of indicative of, like, you kind of forget about some of these stars that we had because it mm -hmm. was just... You know, if you think about the defensive side, what shined the most, I would say Dante Jackson. Maybe yeah, I think he had sparking. the flashiest year. Yeah. You know, I don't think – I think he's got a lot a lot of room to grow, but I think he made some of the biggest plays. Yeah. yeah. So I agree with you guys with, with the defense being a disappointment. And like you're saying, with those new acquisitions, um, mm -hmm. Eric Reed included, you just, you just kind of saw the defense did not intimidate – Anybody. And you know what's triply disappointing about it? Is that Luke Keekley continues to be the best at his position in the league. Mm -hmm. Five times first team all pro. And 
that's like having a franchise quarterback that you can't support and can't have yeah. pieces around them. And that's disappointing too. And, and it's hard because so many of the, the guys are still here. That's been such a key component of that defense. Mm -hmm. So like you said, we're used to them coming out and making those plays, but then yeah. aging was another word that you used. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll use it again during this segment. <laughs> so, so, uh, Panthers had a tough season, obviously didn't, didn't get the record that we thought they would get. I always like to have fun with my audience and share like our jobs and what <laughs> we do some behind the scenes stuff. So, I have one story that I'm dying to tell about my season. Okay. I want to hear from you guys about a tough moment where you're trying to do your job, but everything is just going against you. Oh, man. Hmm. It's tough to cover the Carolina. Fun job. I would, I would. It is a lot of fun. <laughs> you have one? Uh, well, toughest moment, I mean, as far as like a certain day, I always hate locker room clean out, especially when yeah. you don't make postseason because it's just so sad. Everyone has their boxes and their mm -hmm. trash bags and you know, the locker room is going to look completely different next yeah. year. So it's, it's really goodbye for That's some like of those people. Well, <laughs> I can't yeah, help I it. Have, I don't have that experience. <laughs> that, it makes me so sad every year. <laughs> to me, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I kind of like locker room clean out because a lot of the guys are willing to be kind of open and That's reflective. True about the season they've had time to think about it this year they worked at least coming off one win in that final eight games and another fun to talk to I would just go with like half of the days in Spartanburg because <laughs> oh. if you're really talking about like how tough it is to cover the team I mean yes. you're walking up and down huge hills it is just 105 uh, mm -hmm. degrees and humid and then like all of a sudden it'll just jump rain on you, uh, <laughs> yeah. but you know, you kind of embrace it. I you would say, fed anymore either. yeah, uh, oh. well, that's not even right there. That's, yeah. Yeah. There are snacks, true. but it's not the same. That's true. Yeah. So, so my, my tough, toughest day was, well, one thing as you scout, but they equipment issues. So that's when mm -hmm. it's tough when you're trying to cover them, you forgot you had a mic or a cord that you need. But by far my worst experience was I drove up to Pittsburgh. I'm all excited. Oh, I think I, I've excited. been a Pittsburgh fan that, yeah. all my life growing up. I get there, get settled into my hotel. I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go. And I just suddenly get like deathly ill. And I never mm -hmm. made it. I think I literally made it a block out the hotel, going to the game, mm -hmm. stopped at like Walgreens or something like that, got some medicine, was like trying to take it in line, <laughs> dropping pills. I don't know what it was, but it, it came over me. And literally by halftime, I, I was okay. And I remember being in the lobby watching the game. This lady came by and said, oh, you got like the best seat in the house. Yeah, right. And I'm thinking like I'm Could have supposed been to be there at the game. Yeah, so that was, that was my Covering home. games sick are the worst. Yeah, Especially and on the road. The road. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have to go. I mean, you know, my, I think I would have been forced to go. <laughs> yeah. Let's just leave it there. Yeah. Yeah. Forced to go. <laughs> yeah. Go with some, I don't know. Mm. That, that was my story. That's tough. And uh, so going on the season, again, not being a good season, there was a lot of talk about where Bears are going to make it, and, and the players, of course, were on his side saying that Rivera's doing his job. They just have to execute the game plan. Um, do you think the season was more fault of coaching, or was it more fault of the players? What? Because I mean, it just went downhill. So you know, you have to. Count. Yeah, I mean that's tough. I mean it's because it's always a, a mix. I think it's a mix of like what they, how they constructed the team, and thought you know, especially you know, some of these guys that are aging, let's put a count on that, uh, and thought, you know, let's just roll these guys back out there, these big name guys that we're used to making all these big plays and they'll do it again. And then I think, you know, it's definitely a mix of coaching, especially on the defensive side of the ball. It's no secret that they had struggles there. And then I think you do lay a lot of this on Cam Newton's shoulder. I mean, he had the best passing season of his career through Short the first, passes. yeah, but Short still, passes. it was working. Yeah. I mean, it was six and two, and it was working, and they scored explosive plays like that. Um, and you know, I lay a lot of it on the health of Cam Newton's shoulder, and and that's just a tough break. I mean, there's no other way around that so part of it. Pick one or the other. Would you go Cam's shoulder, or would you go? Coach I would go Cam's shoulder. Okay. I think that was, I, I think that was just the crux of what happened to this team this year. And that's the one thing you can never predict. You could be the healthiest, most stacked team going into it, but the minute that key player has that injury, I mean, we, you saw what happened. Yeah. I mean, your season can fall apart. But yeah. some personnel issues as well, just kind of people getting a chance. And, you know, we saw Rivera take over the defensive play calling and that kind of thing. So just sorting it all out. And, yeah. you know, you might not work somewhere, but you work somewhere else. It's, it's all about being in the right environment. Around. Yeah. Let me throw this at you guys. Well, one of the biggest problems was playing complimentary all, uh, ball. Right? Mm -hmm. Defense do something good, offense comes back, doesn't do anything. Offense does something good. So I feel like that was a, a 
recurring thing. Like, they can't play both sides of the ball well. And that's why I felt like coaching has something that was the bigger thing because mm -hmm. you can't get everybody on the same page one week to win a game. That's a good point. Yeah. Right. Go ahead, oh, I was just going to say, I think that's been Carolina football for a minute now. Because even yeah. when, when we were winning <laughs> games, it was, okay, the defense won that game for us. Yeah. The offense didn't back it up. Or, you know, the offense was on fire and the defense fell apart a little bit. So I think for some reason that's been a little bit of a theme, just way more so this year. Yeah, and to your point, and I think there is some that you can lay on coaching. And, you know, you look at any good coach in the history of any sport and at about – you know, shy of 10 years, what happens? The message just doesn't penetrate anymore. And now I'm going to forget who said it after one of the games. It was a defensive player, I think, out of the defensive backfield that literally said, they're giving us everything in practice. It's just not hitting us. Right. Like, we're just not getting it. And that's coaching. Um, Do you feel like coaches have that, that life cycle that players are going to tune them out? I think, I, and I don't think it's like a, a disrespectful tuning out of the coach. I think if you even look at the Hornets and what happened to Steve Clifford, it was the right. same guys. They're all really good guys, and they loved Cliff, but it's just like he was saying the same thing, and they're not, they're not getting it anymore. Yeah. But I think that you can overcome that, and I think that's what Ron Rivera has the ability to do next year with another year, and, you know, maybe some new guys to get that message across too. Mm -hmm. So Ron Rivera does have a job next year. I don't think it's an official official. Mm -hmm. Like he's always <laughs> right. Like, yeah. The tone's been good. Has Tepper made the right decision to with keeping Rivera on for another year? Ashley? I think so. I mean, I think Tepper's a new owner, so you, you want to ease your way in. Not everyone's like that. Some people just come in and they just blow everything up, and it's like, I want what I want, and I don't care what was here before. But I think he's a smart businessman, and he knows, okay, I'm going to make the gradual changes that I need to make. I'm not going to come in and completely do away with everything that is that is Carolina Panthers football. So I kind of think maybe that's his mentality. Um, and, I, I mean, Ron has – done really well here and I think he's proven himself and he even mentioned you know when he came in and Jerry Richardson uh, was the owner of the team he was patient with him and he gave him a chance to yeah. succeed so he you know that's kind of been the the pattern here and I think Tepper maybe says okay you can stay but you're gonna have to figure out some some other people that are going to be leaving and that kind of thing. Do you feel like you brought some of that Pittsburgh Steeler patience with him? It looks like it. Uh, you know, yeah, I think I think it's not. I think also in his business savvy that you're talking about, he yes, he took a lot of big gambles, but they were calculated, and he didn't make, uh, at least as we, that we know of. I don't know a ton about the world of hedge fund managing or whatever Wait, he does. No. <laughs> uh, but you know, he's not going to make terribly emotional decisions and just pull the plug on something. I think Ron Rivera, I mean, there's no way around it. He had a bad year. Seven and nine is a bad year when you have a team that was 11 and five, has all the pro bowlers you could ask for and made the playoffs last year. But I think that David Tepper sees that Ron Rivera is four games away from being the franchise's all-time winning as coach. He didn't just forget how to coach football. Back. There, there was, <laughs> there, uh, I can't tell you how many times I said that during the losing streak. Yeah. Uh, just to say, throw it in there like, listen, this right. is still Ron Rivera. Um, you know, there was obviously problems on the defensive side of the ball, but he never lost that locker room. Those guys always respected him. Even if that message that we talked about wasn't getting through, and most of those last seven losses were competitive. And then to go out and play in a meaningless game and have a bunch of dudes out there that nobody outside of Charlotte, North Carolina knows, and to win convincingly, and I don't care who was playing on the Saints that day, that tells me something too. And here's the other thing. Does David Tepper want to bring in a new coach to coach in 2019, a year that could start without Cam Newton potentially, and we'll get into that, that could be a complete disaster. And I'm really glad he didn't go the Cliff Kingsbury route like the Jets did. I think that was a terrible <laughs> hire. I think, you know, they have a good coach and they need to stick with him for 2019. Short leash for next year? Yeah. Stro? Yeah. I yeah. don't know how short, but. Yeah. yeah. Do you have yeah. thoughts on how short? I mean, I, I think it depends on if Cam starts the season healthy and he's playing. Um, but certainly they need, to, they need to win more football games than they lose in those first four, six, seven, eight games, that first half of the season. Or he could be gone midseason if how it much, goes south. How much would you guess that Tepper has told him, you got another year, but that leash is going to be short? And maybe even going as far as said, hey, by the first quarter, after four games, we're going backwards. Mm -hmm. You may want to have a plan. 
Uh, I don't know if you want to put that kind of pressure on somebody. Maybe you do, but I don't know if you want to set the mentality of I'm putting all this pressure on you and you have to go out and perform because then I'm so focused on every little thing that I'm not doing right that I'm not going to be the best product of, you know, a version of myself. So well, coaches do it all the time. The players, they bring yeah, in coaches. Like that's true. They did that to him. Yeah, that's it would true. be interesting if you that brought is, it on the uh, coach. Right. <laughs> well, that is true. <laughs> like, hey, Norv's going to sit in your office for yeah. just a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see what happens. I think uh, I don't think that's said or like quantified. Like you better do this in the first four games. But mm -hmm. I, I think Ron Rivera has been in the NFL for 30 plus years as a player and a coach. He knows. Yeah. He knows the deal. He knows that he's got to win, no matter what the circumstances are. Really, with Cam Newton, he's got to win right away in 2019. Well, I'm going to let you leave with this because you just talked about Cam and his shoulder. Sure. What do we do? What's I don't know what's wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> Mine hurts because I did shoulder raises the other day and it's weak, but. Uh, so what's the question? Sorry. How, how do we handle Cam's situation going forward? Do we put him put him in a nice room with a big TV and all the video games or whatever he wants to do? Just rest. Just rest. Whether he has surgery or not, he just needs to rest and not throw. And I don't care if it's training camp and he's not throwing. And I really don't care if it's week one and he's not throwing. Mm -hmm. They need to I'll get that shoulder that. right. The whole, this season if it has to be. And I know people don't want to hear that, yeah. but I would, you know, this is a guy that's 30 years old and, or he will be 30 years old next season. But if you look at the longevity of a lot of quarterbacks, even ones that take a lot of hits like him, like Ben Roethlisberger, these guys play into their late 30s for the same franchise that drafted them. And I think the Panthers need to do everything they need to do to make sure that happens with Cam Newton, even if that means a lost season in 2019. So yeah. franchise quarterback? Ashley. I, I mean, that is that is your franchise quarterback. I mean, he is yeah. the face uh, of the Panthers. But I, and I think this season, if anything, if he's not your starter next year, it's allowed him to find a role, you know, still being the cheerleader on the sidelines or coming out to practice and pumping up the guys. I think that's hard for him because that's a new role for him. But I think he's learning how to be that person, whether he's suiting up and playing or not. So. Because, well, I've just been devil's advocate, right? Right. So some people could say, and I'm not – as we all have to say, a medical expert, right? But his injury could be prolonged. He might not yeah. recover from it. So you never should we start getting that other quarterback in place and kind of maybe let him go? I mean, you have to be mindful of your quarterback situation, yeah. and you need to really assess the backup quarterback and, and who you want that to be. Right. So, I and mean. I think this has been something that – you know, a lot of Carolina fans, hardcore Carolina fans, have kind of been pining about for years. I mean, they kept Derek Anderson on for seven years, and he was a good team guy, a good locker room guy. But mm -hmm. at some point, he wasn't just going to be a guy that's going to go out there and win you games. I think, I don't think there's this big sentiment to draft a successor. I don't think you're at that point. And I wouldn't care if they don't draft a quarterback this year. I think they need to sign a veteran quarterback in free agency mm -hmm. who has won games in the NFL. Everybody, you know, Tyrod Taylor is the, the first name that comes to mind with a guy that would be like, I think he would be like, okay, I see an opportunity that I could play, and if not, I could, you know, be a backup on a really good team and come in when I'm needed. I think they need a guy like that that can – I think they need to take the realistic view yep. that Cam Newton may not play week one of yeah. the season. And this year is not the year you want to draft a quarterback. So hold there tight. Any good yeah. <laughs> hold tight. Yeah. But I was going to mention the Andrew Luck situation, too. I mean, he was out a whole season. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, they're in, the he, they're in the playoffs. So it sucks to have to do that, but sometimes it's what you got to yeah. do. Have you guys heard the interesting fact that Carolina has beat three of the four teams in the yeah. playoffs? Even though that's that. a little tainted, I feel like. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, you know. It'd be better to be in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be better to be in there with them right now. Yeah. All right, so I heard our warning, like we're at 15 minutes, right? So we want to keep going. So okay. for the rest part, we're just going to say one of you guys can throw, uh, I'll toss it up to you guys answer, sure. but this will be both here because I want to talk about the free agents. Sure. Mm -hmm. And we got a lot of free agents. We got some aging. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. And we, and we have some younger ones. So any must keeps from that free agent list? Um, just looking at my list that I said I wasn't going to look at. Yeah, uh, must keeps, I think Eric Reed, they need to get that done and they're mm -hmm. working on that. Um, Is that a locker room distraction? Absolutely not. No, I think, <laughs> I, yeah, I see what you're doing there. No way. Um, I think they need to bring Daryl Williams back if his knee holds up and they see that he, he tests well. I think they need him at that position. Colin Jones, I mean, it, you know, not a lot of people know who he is, but he brings a lot in terms of special being team. a captain and, a, and yeah. on special teams, which is an important unit. All right. 
must keeps. You've matched my list a little bit. I'll add to that. Uh, Kyle I'll, Love. I'll throw Kyle Love in there. That's one. There. Yep. Uh -huh. I'm going to throw Thomas Davis in there. Okay. I feel that he could come back. Be a uh, look at you looking at you. Got I'm, I'm taking it in. I'm taking it in. I'm taking it in. <laughs> I, think, I think he could he could be one of those guys that comes back and gives the hometown discount, right? Right. And, and still continues to help Shaq Thompson. Because I don't feel like Shaq Thompson had the, the season that we felt like he was going to have. Mm -hmm. I think Especially his in those first four. Yeah, actually went down during the season, and mm -hmm. Thomas stayed up. So there's something to say there about that. Well, and Shaq went out being on injured reserve, so you got to think about that, too, so moving forward. some of that time? Well, well that, and I'm saying we don't know the extent of will he be ready week one if Thomas isn't there. So, oh. you know, he, he left the season with an injury. So I'm just saying you still got Thomas Davis in yeah. that role. Shaq Thompson might not be the replacement if, if TD's not here. Yeah. So. I would love them to bring Thomas Davis back. But in terms of, like, oh. if, I'm a, if I'm a business like GM, okay. let's see if Marty Herney can take the emotion out of it. Must keep. I don't think Thomas Davis is a must keep. I think he's a hope to keep. Okay. I like it. Go ahead. You got it. I was just going to say, here's my thought on when you look at TD and you look at Julius Peppers, Greg Olson, who's not on the list, but those types of guys, you at least want a couple. Maybe I'm a little bit of a – I do things with my heart, so maybe that would not be a GM of a football <laughs> team one day. But I'm just so cold. But, <laughs> okay, we'll balance each other out then. <laughs> But I think if you're, you're still performing and your numbers are still good, but also you mean so much to the yeah. community, you don't want to lose all of those players off of your team, especially when you don't know what kind of season you're going to have. Yeah. If I'm a diehard Panthers fan and we're not winning games, I'm still going to come see Thomas Davis, Julius Peppers, I, I, especially if it's their last season. Yeah. I'm still going to show up for that. And I'm going to come out. Do you? That's a roll of the dice, man. I don't know what he's going to do. I have no idea what he's going to do. All right, who, who goes away from that free agent list? Who do you think is definitely not going to come back? Um, Devin Funches. Yeah. I think the writing's been on the wall yeah. there. I mean, you don't play the last game of the season? No. And you're, what, a healthy scratch? Right. I'm just, I mean. Devin Funches. I would, uh, I would even say... Um, when I just had it. This is a funny one for me. Cameron Artis Payne, I feel he's definitely not coming back. Oh, yeah. He's got to actually get a real look. <laughs> when he's had a look, he's, play, he's played right. well. Yeah. He needs to go to a team. And he's been a great teammate. Yeah. Right. I mean, you don't hear any complaining from him mm -mm. when a lot of guys would. I think he needs to go show what he can really do. I agree with that. He's never going to get the, the opportunity he deserves here. So. Yeah. I think the mayor might not make it either. It's a crowded receiver room now. Yeah. The guys that do what he does. He gets hurt. A lot. I mean, I love the guy, but he gets hurt yeah. a lot. And I think you got Curtis Samuels and some similar build, but just much more a better player. I feel like that's just Bird's storyline every season. It's like, I made it. I did all these great things. I got hurt. And yeah. we'll see what happens next yeah. year. <laughs> I, I hate it for him because he's, he's a great and guy. And now they have a lot more options in the return game with Samuel Moore. Mm -hmm. Kenyon Barner, I thought, did a nice job. So maybe they bring him lot. back. He he's tough. Yeah. Who? Right? The Kenyon Barner? Barner? Yeah. I, Beyond, I don't remember it much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Greg Olson, does he return? Yes or no? I say yes. I think he is a guy that still thinks he can play football at a high level. Mm -hmm. um, a guy that can really, you know, I think they need to have Ian Thomas on the field more than they did yes. this year. But, you what know, we'll see how that works out. And they're like, hey. We want, we want to continue to develop the younger guy. We think well, he, but I think that's what you do. Maybe reduced. Yeah, I, don't know, I think that's I think what you do. Back. You think yeah. he back and yeah. he reduced? I mean, I think yep. Ian Thomas proved what he can do, and we saw some nice glimmers of all of that with Olsen being out. So you kind of use that veteran leadership in Greg Olson, and then you use the young, yeah. let's keep developing Ian Thomas, and you kind of work that out. And here's another thing, and, and the foot's got to be healthier, no doubt, mm -hmm. but as some athletes age, uh, they become more crafty at their position, and mm -hmm. he's just got such a mind for what he needs to do on the football field and what everybody needs to do on the football field that I think he can still find a way to get it done yeah. at a pretty high level. And he cares so much. Yeah. Like, that passion is still there. It's mm -hmm. not like he's just like, oh, I'm here. Right. It's like, yeah. like we've seen a lot of emotion from him. So, Alana, this is you. Do you see us making a splash in free agency? Getting some big-name guy going aggressive. we got this new billionaire owner. Mm. 
I don't feel like we're really splashy people over here in Carolina. <laughs> so I, off the top of my head, no, but someone has to be that, that big name free agent also has to want to come here. And do you want to come here if you're on the offensive side of things and you don't know who your quarterback's going to be? Do you want to come here when you saw the defense kind of fall apart? You know, I mean, it's not just, up, hey, come here. We got the money. It's like, uh, I don't know if I want to be a part of that. So. I, think, I think they'll create a free agent and Matt Khalil. <laughs> eat the rest of his deal. That'll be their splashy move. I think yeah. he's gone and, and they're just going to eat the money. So, yeah. Paul, this is for you. Who, who are you most for? Get that? <laughs> Who am I most excited that? to watch on the Panthers in 2019? Who's I did get that. that you're most excited to see that growth about? I would say your future guest, DJ Moore. Okay. Uh, I think he's got a world of potential. I love watching him. You know, they drafted him for those yards after the catch. Right. That's exactly what he did. He is mm -hmm. so good at turning a six-yard catch into a 14-yard catch. He's so tough with the ball in his hands to bring down. I think he makes tough catches in the air too. I think he's, you know, yeah. speedy, athletic, powerful, strong, great hands. I think he's really exciting. And you know, Christian McCaffrey. I mean, if the guy can get, it's like Kemba Walker. He's like, can he get better? Oh my God, <laughs> how did he get better? And he did. So, yeah. DJ Moore's mine. All right. So continuing on, we're gonna wrap up. You know, I had this topic on the list which says wild card topic. So, Nick first. Oh, <laughs> oh, I like That's that. First one, right. <laughs> and then we didn't talk about that you want to express. About oh, man, what past, didn't we talk about? Past or future? Oh, my gosh. Um, Mike is yours, man. You know, we didn't talk a lot about Christian McCaffrey, and I think he's one reason that fans should be optimistic about next season. Mm -hmm. uh, he had one of the best years of a running back in NFL history with all of the different things that he can do. Um, and... You know, he's obviously going to be a centerpiece and a focal point of this offense going forward, um, you know, with Cam Newton, hopefully, for the next back half of Cam's career, first half of Christian's career. And I think that should excite a lot of people. I do think they need to scale him back. I mean, he was, I think he played 91% of the team's snaps, and Ezekiel Elliott was second in the league amongst running backs of like 83%. So they need to, they need to tone that down a, a touch. Yes. But it's hard to when you have a talent like that. So do you agree, like, no matter how talented you are, a running back, if they take that many snaps, they're just going to – Gotta You've got to be careful. The running back position, the lifespan is not that long. And he, I mean, mm -hmm. as great as Christian is, yeah. you use him up too much when he's too mm -hmm. young. It's, whew, I don't and know, it, makes, he, it worries me. He <laughs> can run through the tackles, and he <laughs> does run through the tackles, yep. and that's the tough part. Now, listen, they, they throw the ball to him a lot too, and I think that helps, but he takes a lot of hits even when that's happening. Guys are flying in the open field and taking him down, mm -hmm. so you need to scale it back a bit. Throw so line. I don't know. I don't think I have a wild card. Um, well, speaking of Julius Peppers, he's up for Walter Payton Man of the Year, so you can push people to go you vote for him. Heart. There you go. So That's me. <laughs> I do hope he gets that. But, yeah, that would be a, a great, great thing to add to the resume. But, you know, fans can help win money for charities. Yeah. By, by you know do the hashtag? You know how it all works? Oh. Um, hashtag WPMOY challenge? Mm -hmm. or do you, yeah, challenge okay. and then plus last name. Oh, yeah. I think it's just – Peppers. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Peppers. Just the last name. So do what Ashley says. <laughs> it's, it's the best the I could do being put on the spot. I'm like, <laughs> you know, that's me. Just, just trying to. Wild card time. Just whatever comes to mind. Yeah. It's something we didn't talk about was David Tepper and the team going forward about the practice facility. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And Walford, is it? I always say that name. Incorrectly. You got it. And Walford. I think that he's going to show us his business savvy when it comes to both of those moves. Remove the the personal attachment. I don't think we're going to continue to be in Wofford mm -hmm. because I think that he's going to business-wise look at ways to maximize people wanting to be associated with the team and doing different stuff. So I feel like we're not going to renew there. And I can't wait to see what this new practice facility looks like. You know, everybody thinks that Jerry Jones is the, uh, the template guy there for, for doing mm -hmm. something. We don't know where, but there's a lot of land to use in South Carolina that mm -hmm. you could use and have some deep pockets in other than us making that commute. Honestly. I know, I'm over here thinking like, mm. I, don't know if I, I like that and then trying to come back into town for something. But, you know, the Hornets practice out there how many eons ago? Yeah, they did. And, right. and um, was it Rock Hill? I wasn't here at the it time. Was, but about that same exit, I think. Yeah, actually. it's about that same point that mm -hmm. the Knights Stadium mm -hmm. is or was at. Yeah, I, I agree with both of those points. I would personally, I like the, the you know, atmosphere at training camp at Wofford. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is kind of a, we go up and back 
you know, right. consecutive days, and that's kind of a pain. But I like it down there. I think it's a great atmosphere. I like when teams do that. I could see him staying down there just because if you want to look at Pittsburgh, they do the same thing. They have their traditional training camp in Latrobe yeah. about an hour away, and they have a practice facility near the stadium. But could definitely see it going that way. And Wofford gets everybody away from uptown, and really, mm-hmm. you're you, if you're well, you've been, we've all been, and you oh. if you're down there, oh, you are you, you are doing some bonding. No, I'm just <laughs> saying, if you're down there as a team, I mean, yeah. you're really doing that yeah. preseason team bonding. You're away from all the distractions and that kind of thing. Again, me thinking with my heart sometimes I don't want to see them change it up just because I've you know I've enjoyed going down yeah, there and you and know what thing. it means to people down there exactly and the people that are involved in it from a Spartanburg perspective the people that work at it from a Spartanburg perspective mm-hmm. they would hate to lose it and that would that would be sad so are you guys saying that they are going to keep it in Walker? Oh, no, I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. I don't, what, I don't know what David Tepper is going to do wow, tonight, man. Like, I don't know what he's going to do. Well, I, that's hard to call. I mean, because at the same time, as much as you want to stay true to the history of the organization, you also want to make it your own gradually. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that he looks yeah. at, too. So. Well, I appreciate you guys joining me on my first round table for yeah, this is good. Yeah. and review. <laughs> so, uh, Ashley Stroline, thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Carbone, you guys have some <laughs> Tough names if I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> right, you didn't make it easy on yourself. Yeah, thank you guys for coming on. Uh, follow both of these people if you are not. Tune in to them on TV. When are you on all the time? Uh, so most Saturdays and, and Sundays, but yeah, here and there and everywhere. So uh, Monday through Friday, six and eleven. Oh, you're so. that guy. I guess, yeah. <laughs> well, Must yeah, be except, nice. Yeah, we won't talk. Kelsey Riggs <laughs> takes a lot of weekends off. So uh oh, uh oh. It's another episode. We want to bring her on. So uh, for Charlotte Bot, I'm Chris Jenkins. I always invite you guys to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit notifications as well so you can know when videos go up and do live things. And leave some comments below for things that we may have not talked about that you want us to comment. You guys got to go in and check the comments in case. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah. As long as they're nice. Usually not a great yeah. idea. <laughs> I, think your, I think your folks will be nice. Think we'll be all right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we try to be nice. So uh, as always, thanks so much for watching.